Okay, Angie, I guess we'll get the first episode of the Collin County Life uh, rolling here. Uh, we want to welcome our guest. Uh, those of you listening with us, welcome to Collin County Life. Uh, we appreciate you joining us. I'm Brent Cockrum, your host, and uh, here's my partner, Angie. Hi. Say hi. Yeah, you said hi. Hi. Yes. All right. So I guess, first of all, we should probably tell our folks who are listening what it is we're doing, right? So you want to go ahead and cover that? Okay, I'll go ahead and cover that. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, a lot of our friends uh, obviously know that we're kicking off this uh, podcast, Collin County Life, and um, it really originated over the last several months uh, during the COVID pandemic when we're all locked down. And obviously, the last nine months have been full of a lot of things, a lot of changes in our life, and and not the least of which is the fact that we are sort of locked in and we're not able to get out and associate with others that much. But one of the things that came to mind uh, to me, especially especially with sort of the political arguments that go on, is that we don't really build community that well uh, during the pandemic. And we have a lot of new people coming to Collin County as we've had over the you know the last several years. In fact, later on, we'll talk about this, uh, the growth in, uh, in McKinney alone is uh, the fourth fastest growing city in the nation in 2019. So there's a lot of people coming to Collin County. And one of the things we want to do is build community. I know that you're big on building community. You're you're the talker of, <laughs> believe it or not, you are the talker I of the I am the family. talker. I am absolutely the talker. Uh, but here's an interesting thing is, is you don't like to talk in front of people. No. Or not, you, no, I don't. And you don't like to hear yourself talk. No, not a fan of my own voice. Yeah, I recall a story not too long ago when one of our children were in college and had to do some sort of a research project that required them interviewing somebody. And, and just tell us how that went. Yes. So um, our daughter, Tara, chose to interview me. Um, at the time, I was a teacher's assistant in special education, and I, um, she wanted to do or needed to do a project that consisted of just my voice, and then she was going to have a slide presentation of some sort to go with my voice of this list of questions that she had. So she would ask me the questions and I wouldn't be able to answer the questions because I was too nervous to answer the questions to my own child. <laughs> you wouldn't talk into the recorder no, or even? No, I shut down completely. So I chose to go in the bathroom and do it. And even then it was, I was still horrified. So it didn't, it didn't turn out very, didn't turn out very good. But, but if there was no microphone in sight, you would have done fine, right? You could, you can have no, a yes, conversation with your daughter without a without a microphone by the way we should tell our <laughs> we should tell those that are joining us uh we have uh, a guest with us in the studio here uh of the four-legged variety yes four-legged and very furry and very furry and sometimes uh she does her best she's a very quiet dog but uh, uh she does make a noise from time to time i think right now she's chewing on a bone so <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna have to keep talking to keep uh keep the noise, the bone noise down. Yes. So it is not me chewing on the bone. Yeah. So what we want to do is we want this to be participatory. We want the podcast to be crowdsourced. So we want our listeners to provide us with information because we don't have a lot of resources to go around Collin County and find out all the interesting stories. And here's the thing. We know that there are a lot of interesting stories out there. And we're not talking about the big, you know, political stories or, you know, the big CEO story. We're talking about the, the little stories. Yeah. The, the little community story, stories. The community stories about things that are happening that matter to the families in Collin County. And that's right. what we want people to share. Yes. So what we want people to do is interact with us. And one of the ways they can do that is by going to our website is collincounty.life. Collincounty.life. The, uh, the web address is right there on the screen behind me. And on that website, there is a scoop button at the top of the page. You can click that scoop button and enter a scoop. So basically tell us what you think we should talk about. And we may contact you and get some follow-up information. Or we may research on our own. 
but we'll certainly give you credit for a scoop that you give us uh, with your permission. So that's one way you can help us. Another way you could help us it would be to go to our website, on our uh, Facebook, Facebook page. page. That's correct. Our Facebook page. Um, so you go to Facebook and our Facebook page is Collin County Life Podcast. So it's the at sign Collin County Podcast. You search that on uh, Facebook. Uh, you can find us. And there you can just enter comments. And we're going to ask you during the program to on certain things to uh, to to comment and give us feedback on uh, things that we talk about that you may know something about and want to share information about. So we really want it to be interactive and we really want to build community here. So we're very, we're hoping that you will join us in that. So one of the things I like to hear from people, Angie, is how did they get to Collin County? Right? Right. Um, because most of the people that I know, other than our own children who may have been born and raised in Collin County, most of the people I know aren't from here. Right. No one not born or raised here. Right. Or, and, yeah. Yeah. And more and more so, the people in our neighborhood have come from somewhere else. Mm -hmm. um, the top two areas would be somewhere in the Northeast and someone in the far, far yes. West. Yes. Right? Lots of people from California. Yeah. Um, and uh, so it's so funny when I meet somebody new in the neighborhood and they say they moved here from California, they always like to tag on at the end of that, but we're not like that. I don't know what, I don't <laughs> know what that, that mean? mean. I, yes. I don't know what that means exactly, <laughs> but um, they want to make sure it's clear that they're not that kind of Californian, but um, we welcome all. And of course you and I, we didn't start out here, did we? No, we, I didn't. Uh, where did you start out? Well, I started out initially in Michigan, hmm. went to Wisconsin, small smidgen of time in Wisconsin, then went to Indiana. And then from Indiana, we moved here when I was eight. So you were eight when you moved here. So before you moved here and your parents came in, they, that you did the sit down and they're like, we're moving to Texas. What was hmm. your first thought? Oh, it was horrifying. I, I specifically recall at eight years old being devastated at the idea of moving to Texas specifically because in my little eight-year-old mind, Texas was tumbleweeds, saloons, horses, and swinging saloon doors. And that's <laughs> what I envisioned moving to. So you'd been watching a lot of television. You know, a lot of television and movies, when they show Texas as the setting, it's oftentimes West Texas, you know, with the dust blowing and the tumbleweeds. Very gun smokish. Yeah, very gun smokish, right? Yes. Um, and very rarely do, you know, people get a sense that Texas is like what we see here in Collin County. In fact, um, often I will take pictures of places that I'm at in Collin County and I'll post them to Facebook and say, can anybody guess where I am? And and very rarely do they say North Texas because it, it's not what they think North Texas right. would look like. Yes. Right? Yes. I moved here in 92 and I moved here sort of on purpose. I actually visited uh, Texas in 91 and I fell in love with it. First of all, because I think I came in the early spring, I believe it was like around Easter. So it was still kind of cool outside in Ohio where I lived. And when I came down, I was like, it's warm. And that was my first impression. I was like, I can dig this because I like the warm weather. And in fact, my, my, my dream location would be somewhere where it's 85 degrees all the time, somewhere like Hawaii. Yes, Hawaii would be perfect location. But um, I don't know that we're going to make it there in our lifetime. So we'll see. But um, that was my first impression. And then everything was just clean and new. And so when I went back to Ohio... I decided that uh, that was going to be my goal was to move here uh, to Texas. And it was a year after that, uh, I believe. And it was, I still remember, it was May the 1st in Ohio uh, when I packed up and, and left and headed towards Texas. And I remember waking up that day and it was like 40 degrees outside. Mm, no, on not, May, not, no. On May Can't 1st. Can't do that. I know, no. <laughs> uh, and, and so the winters are just so long up there. Uh, I like a little winter, you know, maybe six or seven hours of it. Right, <laughs> absolutely. But after that, I want to get warm again. And and there's sometimes there's just, you know, uh, you just can't get warm in the north. Uh, and I spent a lot of my life in colder climates. Um, so purposely moved here and 
it was one of the best decisions of my life. And I've never thought about living anywhere else. I don't know if you've shared the same thing. So what was the, what was one of the things once you got here at eight years old, that sort of changed your perspective of Texas? Cause I know you like it now. Oh yes. I would not leave this state for much. Well, except for to go to Hawaii, of course. Um, <laughs> My, the two things that I specifically recall that changed the perspective was that there was no tumbleweeds <sighs> and we did live in an actual house, not a log cabin and tacos. Oh, we were, there was in Indiana in 1970 something. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um, we had never experienced tacos before. Never heard of a taco. Never heard of a taco. Never had a taco. So, yeah, yeah, that's interesting. So, um, I grew up in a military family, so I am a, a military brat and spent a good part of my life before moving to Texas, it, actually living in Europe. Uh, but other than that, in some of the northern states like Illinois, Ohio, which I've already mentioned, New Jersey, um, mm-hmm. I often say my year in New Jersey was the worst year of my life. Uh, nothing against you know, people from New Jersey, it just wasn't for me. Um, but one of those years, you'll remember, um, I did live in San Antonio. And I think it was like 1974-ish, 73-ish, can't remember exactly. But that was the year I attended super kindergarten. Super kindergarten. Yeah, so <laughs> so I'd attended kindergarten in uh, Kentucky. Um and the starting age was different than it was in Texas. So I completed an entire year of kindergarten in Kentucky. And then we moved to San Antonio. And I had to do it all over again. Yeah. that See, that didn't happen to me. When we moved here, I was in the third grade. So we were halfway. We moved here in the spring. So we were halfway through. So they didn't have a choice. They had to put me in the third grade. Oh. But based on cutoff, I should have, I guess, gone halfway through second grade right. because of when I was born. So it's, the interesting thing is, is then I was introduced to tacos much earlier in my life than you were. Yes. Um, and my mom learned how to make them. So when we moved away from Texas, so when we moved back to Germany, for example, my mom already knew how to make tacos. So we were eating tacos when tacos weren't cool. <laughs> well, the funny thing was the way my mother made tacos, which I have no idea where she learned to make tacos, but she, there's, I have never eaten a taco the way my mother made tacos. Like Since she, then? You've never eaten a taco since your mother made them? The only taco that they make, like the way my mother made them, is Jack in the Box's taco. Like with the fried, uh-huh. it's like deep fried shell. I don't, I have Kinda no idea. Greasy? Very greasy. It's really? good, but. Mm-hmm. It's not like your Taco Bell taco. Well, grease is always good. Right. Uh, yeah. So so my mom learned how to make tacos. What was funny, though, about that is anywhere we else we went, people hadn't been exposed to tacos. I know people listening are thinking, you are crazy, but this is the truth. You know, when it came to Mexican food, like tacos and enchiladas, a lot of people didn't know what they were. Mm-mm. No, not at all. In fact, when I was in high school in Illinois... We couldn't get, so, you know, today you can go and get Doritos from the grocery store. You can go and get uh, chips and salsa. You can get chips and salsa at almost any restaurant. You couldn't do that um, in Illinois until a restaurant called Chi Chi's arrived sometime in the- Chi Chi's? Chi Chi's, yeah. Hmm, that doesn't really sound like a Mexican restaurant. Really? Chi Chi's? No, it doesn't. Well, that was our Mexican restaurant. It was pretty good, Um, but- must not have been good enough because I don't think it's there anymore. But anyway, that was sort of that was the northern culture's, you know, exposure uh, to Mexican mm-hmm. food. So mm-hmm. uh, that's definitely, you know, a reason not to leave. Any other reasons why you haven't left the great state of Texas? Well, the weather specifically. Plus, I'm not I'm not a proponent of change. Oh, OK, not big on change, not big on change. <laughs> What we want to do, we want to hear other people's stories, right? Yeah. Um, and so we want people to go to our website or uh, to Facebook and tell us your story about how you got here, where you came from, and sort of maybe any misconceptions, funny misconceptions you might have had about Texas before coming here. 
and then uh, why you stayed. And so when we have guests on the show, that'll be a standard question that we ask them. Okay, Angie, we're going to turn our uh, attention to Collin County News. So we're going to talk about some of the things that have happened here recently over the last week or so in Collin County, certainly from the beginning of the year. And I think one of the first things we want to talk about is something that's obvious to most of us, and that is uh, the coronavirus or COVID-19, where we're at with that. Okay. So um, as you know, if you've been here since the beginning, which was about March, February, March of last year, you know that Collin County got off to a pretty slow start when it came to uh, the coronavirus. Um, as of today, um, or as of yesterday, the end of the week, we've had 62,000 confirmed cases in Collin wow. County. Wow. Um, and that's that's among a million people. Oh, so, okay. well, I mean, that's... a million or so people. Right. Uh, so I, I would say that overall, Collin County has still been blessed in the area of COVID. Um, and it's hard to tell whether, you know, we're past the peak or before the peak, but God help us, we're after it and yes. things are getting better. Let's... So now we have the vaccine out. And um, so apparently uh, a couple of days ago, one of our commissioners, uh, Daryl, hail yes. Uh, oh, yes. I've seen those signs. Yes. Daryl, yes. hail yes, hail uh -huh. uh, posted on his <laughs> Facebook page. You know, one of those cryptic uh, Facebook posts. Right. Um, he said, you know, basically he said he'd heard that there were government officials that were sort of jumping the line on the vaccine. So taking advantage of their positions and getting in line to get the vaccine before really? yeah yeah but he didn't name any names huh yeah that's rather cryptic yeah it's like the person who like in your neighborhood facebook page it says hey the person driving the black truck with license plate no 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 you know right. i saw what you did yes you know yes slow down yeah and so now everyone's looking around for the black truck to see who that person was instead of just you know um so it would be interesting to know who the government officials are who are using their connections to bump the line so another interesting story i saw out of alan i know you're a chick-fil-a fan i love chick-fil-a right um yes. and you're gonna have to explain some of this to me but okay. uh, apparently in alan uh there's a chick-fil-a on um stacy road there in front of the outdoor mall um on the west side on, on the east side, on the east side. Uh, of 75 yes uh, there's a chick-fil-a i think there's a mcdonald's there and i think there's an in and out burger yes correct but apparently the chick-fil-a is causing a little bit of a, pro a traffic problem it seems like chick-fil-a causes a traffic problem no matter where they're at it's because it's delicious yeah and i just can't figure it out i mean i like chick-fil-a don't get me wrong but i can't figure out why that many people like Chick-fil-A all at the same time. Really? Yeah. It's good. The service is amazing. I'm not sure how. But Taco Bueno is good. Oh, no. No. <laughs> yeah, no. Taco Bueno is no. good. Um, uh, I... Arby's is good. Oh, oh <laughs> no. <laughs> and uh, But there's no, there's not people lined up around the building. Can you think right. of any other good restaurants uh fast food restaurants uh that have like double lines and people wrapped around the building um no it's it's surpri it's surprising to me and i'm not even sure that it's everywhere right I, I i've gone to it is, is it because i've gone other states and i've eaten a chick-fil-a and it doesn't seem like oh i don't yeah i can't speak to other states i can only speak to my great state of texas and uh every chick-fil-a in Collin County that I have frequented mm -hmm. has had double lines. Maybe they don't, maybe we don't have enough Chick-fil-A's. Maybe. Maybe uh, we need as many Chick-fil-A's as we have CVS pharmacies. Maybe we could open a franchise ourselves. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> I think you have to have a bunch of money to get a Chick-fil-A um, franchise. Um, but anyway, Apparently, they got approval to expand um, and, uh, I guess, build on to their building, but also do some enhancements to their parking lot to make it easier to get through. Yeah. Uh, of course, they built one here in McKinney, where we live, um, and it has a double line drive through that's about a mile long, I think. Yeah, it's it's pretty long and, and the parking lot is uh got huge. probably a, it's a huge parking lot it's, it's got huge. like 100 parking yes, spaces it's, a, it's perfect yeah but it's yes. still full yes it is yes it is 
but it is a little easier to navigate than. Um, but rumor has it there will be building another Chick Fil A in closer proximity to our current residence. That is correct. So, so to give give our listeners some idea. Um, and we don't want to wait this uh, towards McKinney because we have lived in several places in Collin County. We currently live in McKinney, but both yes. you and I have lived in Plano. We've lived out in the country. Correct. Um, and we've lived in Princeton. Now, currently, we're living in McKinney. And um, where we live right now is supposedly the fastest growing or the hottest corner in uh, North Texas. Really? Yeah, as far as new commercial building and all of that right. stuff. So we're off of 380 here. And so, uh, yeah, we're promised to get a Chick-fil-A, but we haven't seen it yet. They haven't broken ground on the Chick-fil-A. So talking about growth, okay, so when I moved here in 92, Plano was, I guess, on the back end of their growth. Uh, so they were pretty much almost done well i can't even say that yeah. because when i moved here in 92 like west plano didn't really exist you went past uh like coit and there was nothing there right no that's yeah that's true and even like the custer kind of towards what now is the 121 area that still wasn't developed like it is today right and I that's mean, kind of that allen plano corridor area Right. EDS used to sit out there. Uh, it looked like a spaceship, like on the on the horizon, because it was out there all by itself, out there off of Legacy. You know that you're looking at me puzzled. By you know where J.C. Penney is. Yes. J.C. Penney Oh yes, yes, yes. All yes. that out okay. there was yeah. un undeveloped. Yeah, my mom worked the, at that J.C. Penney's. Right. So, um, yeah, it was kind. It was kind of a strange location for. Well, that's all that was out there. Yeah, so when I when I moved here, I was looking for an affordable place to live, and um, uh, Plano really wasn't it. I mean, it was a little high for me, but I was working in Las Colinas, and um, it was already a, a, a heavy trek, you know, commuting every day. But I did ask some people about this place called McKinney, and really? I yeah, I said, hey, it looks like you know the apartments are cheap up there in McKinney. What do you guys think about this? Oh, yeah, you don't want to move to McKinney. No, just growing up in Plano, McKinney was the country. And in our mind, McKinney was like a long drive away. Yeah. It's, it's funny to look back at, at the thought process of even, you know, a driving teenager. But coming out to McKinney was like going out to the sticks. Right, right. And and so in that was in 92. And I know it's a long time ago. People are like, oh, it was 18 years ago. Well, 28 years ago, yes. Um, but just to kind of give you an idea of the 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 the, the growth, the pace of the right. growth, it's just incredible. It is, especially when I mean, having been here since I was eight, growing up in Plano and just seeing all the Ever, uh, driving around Plano alone, uh, just all the different things that are currently here that were not here. So another, the, that was one of my other impressions too when I first moved here was because of all the new development in Plano, you they had laid out all of these streets, uh, these you know four uh, two lanes on each side, these divided streets. You don't see that in the north. I mean, you're lucky if you get two lanes in the north, right? With suicide okay. lanes. Yeah, right. So here you had you know four lanes but they were they were headed to nowhere they were out in the middle of nowhere <laughs> and there were no yeah. there were no houses or buildings yeah or... like the old 121 to the airport yeah right right um yeah that was really stop and go but anyway uh so mckinney right now is the fourth fastest growing city in the nation so since 2001 uh when we had 58,000 people who lived here uh, we now have 198,000. Wow. So that's like a 240% increase uh, in the, in, uh, since uh, 2001. And by the end of, uh, by 2040, I pray to God we're still here in 2040, but there'll be 300,000 people living in McKinney. I don't know where they're going to live, right. uh, maybe upstairs. Um, <laughs> <laughs> maybe we can rent out the upstairs, but yeah. we're, we are definitely growing. So um I don't know if that's good news or bad news. I'd love to hear from our audience. What do they think about the growth? Right. Is it yeah. is it good or is it bad? Know. I mean, I know I personally um, 
there's days that I'm like, wow, look, look there. There's a Hobby Lobby five minutes from my house. Mm -hmm. And then there's days that, you know, I'm like, wow, there's too many people. I liked my mm -hmm. small little town. Right. So I think it's, yeah, it's maybe it's good and bad. Right. I don't, yeah, I don't know because definitely we live, like I said, off of 380, which is, is a sort of a point of controversy here recently because, um, because of all the traffic on 380, they want to build, um, they want to enhance it. So when I say enhance, they, they have five different plans of how they either want to widen 380 or they want to build a five, five different choices. They have five different plans, options wow. of various types, but yeah. So, but you know, one plan is, you know, just to widen it out, make it wider. Another would be uh, to create a bypass that goes through um, prosper, which has created this, sort of a bubbling up controversy between the city of Prosper and the city of McKinney, uh, which are the two cities that are affected by 380 uh, for the most part. For the most part, yeah. yeah. Um, um, well, Princeton, but not not to the same level at this at this point. Right, not to the, tr the level of traffic that we right. currently have. Um, and so, so apparently Prosper voted a couple of weeks ago on a, uh, uh, you know, they had to, each city had to sort of vote on which, plan they liked out of the five and then Collin County is going to vote. So the Collin County government is going to vote on uh, their final plan. And um, so Prosper, uh, they voted, their city council voted for the plan that didn't include going through Prosper. Oh, yeah. Wow. That's a good plan. <laughs> yeah. So I guess. Like not in my backyard. <laughs> right. right? right. Um, <laughs> And I guess people could make different mm. arguments for that because sometimes having something come through your city can help enhance the city and bring more consumer traffic. More, right. More Which people. is kind of interesting because if you think about it, if it goes through Prosper, they have all that new development. Right. So you think it would benefit fit them to some degree but of course i don't know what the plan looks like right but then again they could be like mckinney was 20 years ago that basically said we like the sleepy town right. feeling yes, right the, and yes the bedroom community feel right so they may be trying to keep that out um and then of course mckinney council voted and guess which plan they voted for hmm the one that doesn't take it through mckinney that's correct the wow. one that goes through prosper so wow. Yeah, huh. imagine that. Yeah, imagine that. So uh, I guess they'll get it worked out. Yeah. But um, and is the funding involved somehow or another in this? Oh yeah, there there's funding. Um, right. So I if it goes through McKinney, does that mean McKinney pays for it? No, I think I think I'll have to or, do some research on this, and there's probably somebody out there that can probably explain it. Um, and and be, feel free to do that. But I'm thinking like. Uh, they do for the toll roads and everything. I think everybody participates. Okay. So the county would participate. Uh, the cities that are affected would participate. Obviously, the federal government would probably participate as well. State. Okay. So, yeah, I, I think it's more of a, you know, a decision about quality of life than it is cost. Because I, I, I don't know if there's a big cost difference between the different options. So it is what it is. I, hey, real quick, I want to talk about... Um, a gentleman that we lost here in Collin County uh, recently. Um, and I love, I love these stories, uh, not about losing people, but I love the stories. Good to know. I love the, Good to know. I love the people stories. And uh, so there was a, a man by the name of uh, Bob um, Manus or Manus uh, who lived in Plano. He was 79 years old and he was a school crossing guard. So wow. obviously he was a school cr uh, crossing guard for 16 years. So wow. Yeah, so it sounds That's like he's impressive. Yeah, sounds like he started, you know, near retirement or shortly after retirement, right. and uh, and decided to serve his community in that way. And uh, just the outpouring of love for him and his family uh, when he was hospitalized, he he had COVID and he died from complications of of the virus. Wow. That's um, but uh, though I just love to hear the stories of the people who invest in their communities like that. He's obviously yeah. not getting paid much. I don't even know if you get paid. Yes, a, no, okay. you get paid. We ha we have a, a there's a, when I worked at McGowan, mm -hmm. there was an element where our crossing guard was an older woman. Mm -hmm. I'm assuming she's still there. Um, but yeah, they get. I think they get paid kind of like a substitute type scenario. I'm oh, not yeah. exactly certain. I just know that w people had to step in for that person from the school. 
Oh. if the crossing guard was out oh really yeah so that's that's a very important place so you had to send a teacher out there yes, or a principal or absolutely like that. because we had to make sure the kids get across the street well safely. i think it's also important because in many ways that's the first face your child sees sort of yes. representing the yes. school you know yeah. yeah it could really change your day if that crossing guard is like really mean mm. That could ruin your day yes or yells at you to hurry up and get across the street yeah. little kid yeah. yeah yeah when yeah uh so they can i think they they have an impact right um so just losing somebody like that i think is really sad um 79 obviously uh you lived but think a, about a long... all the kids though 16 years especially if he was in the same place mm -hmm. think about all the kids that knew him right you know, yeah. I mean, kids that maybe, I don't know, did they say whether it was an elementary school or? It was. In fact, um, let me check my notes here. It was, oh gosh, where did I write that down? Hmm. I didn't write it down, but he was, um, I, I can't remember the name of the school. Hmm. That would be interesting to find out if anyone knows him yeah. or experienced yeah i can tell us, us a story about mr manus yeah and and the impact that me they had on their life right so, absolutely yeah um you know here's a here's a last funny story i think it's the last story i've got yeah last story i've got is kind of a funny story um it involves crime but <laughs> but you know there's just some funny crimes there are or, or not so smart crimes crimes maybe. of stupidity yes yes right? yes um uh, a stupidity that rises to a criminal level so apparently justin bryce Collum, a 25 year old um i don't know if he lives in princeton or was just passing through princeton but he decided to steal a princeton school bus huh yeah uh and so he drove off with the princeton school bus towards uh, the city of mckinney and decided i guess decided to stop at the sam's club well, a school bus can hold a lot of supplies and you can get a lot of supplies at the Sam's Club. <laughs> you can. Um, and I don't know what he was thinking. Maybe he was just borrowing the bus because he did have to make a Sam's Club <laughs> run. He needed some stock up on some toilet paper. Exactly. Uh, but when he pulled into the Sam's Club parking lot, somebody thought something was a little off. Right. And so they called the McKinney, the police department. And they had a little bit of, a, I don't think it was a high speed chase. I don't think you can do a high speed chase in a school bus. Probably not. Right. I, yes. Um, it might be a little difficult to get it up and going that fast. Yes. Yeah. Um, so um, they finally caught up to him at 380 and uh, Custer Road. And uh, now Mr. Column has gone to jail. So yes. I hope he's learned a lesson from that. Angie, you're going to love the guest we have on today's episode. Dr. Liz Brazine from McKinney Hearing Services is with us. And uh, she's going to be talking about hearing loss. And I know for sure you think that I've lost my hearing from time to time, but you and I both know better. Dr. Brazine is the owner of Hearing Services of McKinney. She received her Doctor of Audiology degree from the Arizona School of Health Sciences. In addition, she received both her Master of Arts and Bachelor of Science degrees in audiology from Northwestern University. I think those are the uh, purple people from Chicago. Dr. Brazine is a McKinney resident where she lives with her husband, Dave. Uh, welcome, Dr. Brazine, to Collin County Life. Uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, one of the first questions I like to ask our guests is, how did you end up in Collin County? Okay. And uh, why did you stay? How did I end up in Collin County? Well, I've actually, this is my second go around in Collin County. So I grew up in Chicago, lived in Chicago for 30 some years, went to graduate school there. I went to work for a hearing aid manufacturer in the 90s, happened to meet my husband at the time who worked for the same company. He was based in McKinney. So we decided it might be better to live in the same city. So in 1998, when we got married, I moved down here. And we were here for about two years, and then just an, a job opportunity with the same company came up, which required us to go back to Chicago because that's where the U.S. headquarters were. So in 2000, we moved back up there, and we were there for about four years and just got tired of the cold and the snow and the higher cost of living. And, um, you know, we both traveled full time for work at the time. So DFW worked just as well as O'Hare for us. So back, yeah. here we come. Here we came. <laughs> Yeah, well, uh, the airport hasn't been always that convenient, but in recent years, it's been uh, easy to get to, yes, right? Yes, 121's a, a blessing. <laughs> <laughs> so what, if I came into your um, 
uh, the hearing services of McKinney, what what kind of services would you offer me? Okay. Obviously, you wouldn't look at my eyes, but no, probably not. So we do a little bit of everything. Um, when you, when I think about audiology versus, let's say, people sometimes confuse it with an ear, nose, and throat doctor, we're going to do the non medical end of things. Okay, mm -hmm. so we don't we're we're not treating um, in terms of medication, surgery, et cetera. But we literally see patients of all ages. Mm -hmm. So we see patients from birth on up. Um, you know, with, with babies in, in the state of Texas, all babies have to have their hearing screened before they're allowed to leave the hospital. And in McKinney, um, we do have a birthing center and they don't have the facilities there to, to screen. So we get a lot of the babies that, awesome. that way. Yeah. We also, um, it, you know, as you can imagine, the majority of what we're going to be doing is focusing more on hearing aids. So although we see all ages, I would say more of it's going to be 65 plus, but we really get all ages in terms of just diagnostics. Someone's got concern about hearing, we bring them in, we do a hearing test. If it's something that we're going to address a hearing aid with, we're going to continue with that patient. Sometimes it will be something more medical-based, in which point we're going to refer them out to an ear, nose, and throat doctor. So. Yeah, you know, um, like I've said, I, you know, it's hard to tell when you have hearing loss, I think. Um, it just things just kind of, unless you wake up with it one day, it just kind of fades away. I remember, uh, I don't have hearing loss that I know of. No one's told me, but I, I do have issues with my vision. And uh, the way I found out about that was when I went to the DMV to get my license renewed, they made me look into the little scope thing. And I didn't know whether I was looking at letters or numbers. So they told me I had to go get yeah. glasses. So how does it happen in the hearing world? So with hearing, usually it's a very gradual process. I mean, as you sort of referred to, yes, there can be sudden hearing losses. Mm -hmm. um, you can, I mean, that's what happened to Rush Limbaugh. He woke up one day, no hearing in either ear. That's usually something viral or idiopathic that mm -hmm. sometimes we just really don't know the answer as to why it happens. Sometimes there can be temporary conditions. You know, someone's got, not to be gross, but you know, their ears full of wax or they've got an ear infection. That's something more temporary. Now, in nature. I will admit to me yeah. that happening to me. Yeah, but. Just don't use Q-tips. Um, but you mm. know, those are things that are more temporary in nature, but can happen more suddenly. So the patient's more aware of it because it's a sudden change, right. but usually hearing loss is gradual. And it's oftentimes going to be the family members who are more aware of that. You know, when, when hearing loss gradually changes, what happens to the person with the hearing loss is along the way, they sort of reestablish what their norm is. It's mm -hmm. not normal hearing, but that's their point of reference. Whereas others around them are having to act as that second set of ears. Mm -hmm. So they're having to repeat, they're noticing the TV being turned up, things like that. Right, right. And and, and they tend to compensate, right? Absolutely. Um, by starting to read lips and things. And yeah. they don't even know it, right? Right. Sometimes I mean, every, they don't even know they're doing that. We all, honestly, whether you have normal hearing or not, we all read lips. We all gain nonverbal information. So reading lips is critical. Wow. Wow. So um, why do people try and deny they have a hearing loss? Because, you know, it's almost sometimes you're excited when you get glasses because you, 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 it's like a fashion statement. So if you're and some people wear glasses today, they don't even have vision loss. Right. So Correct. what is what is the stigma with hearing loss? Well, first of all, I, you know, having practiced for 30 plus years, that's embarrassing, but that's the truth. <laughs> um, we see far less of a stigma today than we would have in the past. And I think it's it's a couple of reasons. We have better trained professionals. We have better products, better technology. You know, now we're doing things like connecting with iPhones and, wow. you know, other smartphones and streaming things and turning hearing aids into Bluetooth headsets and being able to connect with TVs. I mean, there's just so much more technology. You also see people walk around with Bluetooth headsets, you know, so there's less of a, oh goodness, that must be a hearing aid on that person. Wow. I also think that the baby boomers and and uh, our you know younger generations are more inclined to not want to miss things. You know they're they're not wanting to um, be without hearing and and the struggle that that means. It can have an impact on their jobs, etc. So I think we're seeing more accepted acceptance of just wanting to function better and better communication. The world is about communication. Better lifestyle. Better lifestyle, you know? absolutely. And that's critical. And that's what we, when we're identifying a new patient and we're looking at hearing aid options, you know, that's one of the first things I say to the patient. Yes, hearing loss is, a, is part of it, and but we can program to just about any loss today. 
really what I want to know more of is what is your lifestyle? How and where do you spend time? Because that's truly going to help me make the help them make a better choice with what device they go with. Since I just remember back years ago, uh, the older men at church and they, mm -hmm. all you heard was their ears whistling. Oh yeah. For some reason. Oh yeah. There feedback. Was, oh yes. Yes. Like, we now have very good anti-feedback yeah. management. But they didn't even hear it, you know, yeah. but right. uh, anyway, uh, speaking of lifestyle, um, I don't know if it has an impact or not, but um, you know, the last few months during the, uh, the pandemic, mm -hmm. how has that impacted either the way people like access services or their lifestyle for those who have hearing yeah. loss? That's actually a great question. And, and I've written a couple of articles about it and I think it's, it's a major concern. And a um, couple of things I would address here. First of all, hearing loss, forget the pandemic for a moment, hearing loss that goes untreated really can socially isolate you. Wow. Okay. So there's a cutoff. There's some, you know, barrier between you and the normal hearing world. And some of us are more social than others, but we still are in, we're still social beings. We need that interaction with people. When you have hearing loss, you start to isolate. There was actually a big national council on aging study in 2000 that showed that untreated hearing loss, again, leads to social, social isolation, really? as well as can lead to depression and other major health events. So Without even the pandemic, that was a concern. Now we got a pandemic. Now people are having to stay home. And you know, especially if I'm thinking about my senior population, it's safer for them to be home. Now, now I have to decide whether it's my personality or my hearing <laughs> that keeps me isolated. Well, it's, but... That's hard to say. <laughs> so for, for them, you know, now they're stuck at home and they can't get out and they can't can I mean, thankfully we have technology, we've got Zoom, we've got FaceTime, we've got things like that, but still we're seeing them being even more isolated. Um, then think about them wearing hearing aids. Okay, first of all, masks and hearing aids don't necessarily go, they don't work well together. Right. So we've had an increase of patients losing hearing aids. We've had patients who have to really oh, yeah, yeah. have to think about, okay, I'm taking my mask off. Are my hearing aids still present? Um, that's part of it. The bigger issue is what the, and I, I understand the importance of masks by all means, right. but there is an, it's an impact on how well they communicate. So masks do a couple of things. First of all, it blocks our phys physical view. Right. Um, you mentioned lip reading. We all read lips. We all oh, get nonverbal yeah. information. You cover that face and you've lost that. Yes, I have a clear mask. I found that I could whisper a lot of things now that I couldn't before. Yeah, because absolutely. Of the mask. Absolutely. <laughs> so I have a clear mask and that can help with the visual end of things. But right. the other thing that people often do not realize with masks is that it's blocking the sound. Right. In particular, it oh, blocks. Yeah. yeah, it's muffling. In particular, it's blocking the high pitches. That's where more, pe that's the treble. That's where more people have hearing loss. That's the consonants of speech, which give us our meaning or clarity to what we're listening to. Wow. So major impact, you know, the, the beauty for some of these people though, is that with today's technology, with being able to adjust a lot of it through your smartphone, a lot of the hearing aid manufacturers have actually come up with mask modes really? so that it can help to counter that. But it, it is, it, it's a big concern in terms of services. You know, we, we probably were only closed for about a week. We were considered essential workers. We just had to kind of figure out how do we service these patients safely. So there's so obviously- I can, I can get into your office. Oh, today. absolutely. Yeah. Okay. You know, we try to limit, obviously we're following all the CDC sanitation protocols on and on and on, et cetera. But you know, it, yeah, so we're, we're fully, fully open. All right. Great. So um, speaking of that, well, I have one last question. Maybe you can answer it, maybe not. Um, but what percentage of the population would you say suffers from significant hearing loss? Well, I'm sure everyone probably does, right? So significant is, ugh, that's a, such a hard word to describe. If you looked literally just at the, um, the statistics in the US, roughly 15% of the population have some amount of hearing loss. Wow. Okay. Um, how do you define significant? Because I can have people with a, what I would classify as a fairly significant hearing loss on paper, and yet they have no concept. And then I have other people with a very, very minimal hearing loss who find themselves majorly impacted by it. Yeah, I think Angie thinks my hearing loss is significant. Well, but and that's I a, don't. Yeah, you know, spouse, yeah. spouses. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, you know, if you think about, so literally in the US, that's going to be roughly your, your percentage. So roughly about 36 or so million. Right. Um, one in four households will have someone with a hearing loss. 12.5% of kids from the age six to 19 mm -hmm. 
have hearing loss. Yeah, we had a child. <laughs> one of our children was diagnosed with hearing loss, but refused yeah. to wear uh, hearing aids. And I remember when I first met you, you guys were asking, and I'm like, is she approaching preteen? And you're like, yep. I'm like, yep. Now it's a little different today yeah. because we do have, you know, they kind of look at some of the smartphone technology right. as fun. Yeah. Um, so there's a little bit less of that. Yeah. Mom and dad, I need a smartphone now. Absolutely. You know? Yes. Yeah. That's often their argument, but with, with the kids, most of it is coming from wearing, I mean, obviously there's hereditary issues, et cetera. Um, but most of it's coming from the use of earbuds. Wow. So, yep. All right. So, um, finally here, if someone's listening, uh, to the podcast and they're like, you know, I know someone who needs help, uh, Liz, uh, Dr. Brazine can help them. Um, where, how would they go about doing that? So they call in, they can go to your website and make an appointment. How would they do that? We, you have lots of different options. Um, certainly we do have our website and mm -hmm. they can log on there and they can put a request in. I usually then respond to those. Most people I'd say, just thinking about kind of our population, most people tend to call in. Mm -hmm. um, so they would call the office. Obviously we'd gather all their information, figure out kind of what they need what they're looking for, what kind of appointment they need, and then go ahead and get them scheduled. All right. Well, thank you for joining us today, Dr. Brazine. And I'm certainly hoping that you'll help uh, Collin County hear better in the future. Absolutely. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Okay, Angie, we want to let our listeners know about some of the upcoming events uh, over the next couple of weeks they may be interested in participating in here in, in the Collin County area. So why don't you throw out a couple of things that we can we can do over the next couple of weeks. Okay, good. I'm all about having fun. So to start off some fun time, um, we have, there's a couple of different things, well, actually quite a few things going on here in McKinney. Um, and we uh, don't, we don't necessarily want it to be all about McKinney. No, no, and it, no, but right now it will be. But obviously people can share with us things that pop into their head. Right, yes, because yeah. again, you mentioned our resources are you and I. Right, and, and a couple so, of dogs. <laughs> yeah, a lot of dogs. But they're not very helpful. Right. Um, so we definitely would need help to find out what's going on in the community and other than Facebook. Right. All right. So go okay. ahead. So um, let's see. On February 5th, we have a DI wine workshop that is. Wait a minute. Did you say DI wine? Yes. DI wine. All right. I'm very familiar with the DIY because we've been doing a lot of that around we the house. We have been doing a lot of that. Yes, we have. Um, but this is doing DIY with wine. Oh, that could be dangerous. Or fun. Okay. So this um, is going to be held at the um, Restore, the Habitat for Humanity Restore here in McKinney, Okay. Um, which is at 2060 Couch Drive. Um, you have to register. There are tickets. Um, and the event is from six to nine. So what this is, if I understand correctly, is uh, many things are donated to the restore. This is how they get their things. We've donated some things. We have donated some things. Um, and I guess there's things that they can't necessarily use or they get a whole lot of toilets. I don't know, <laughs> but they get a lot of some. So they did have a lot of toilets last time we were in there. Okay. Well, maybe you're going to do a DIY wine with the toilet. Okay. Um, so you'll create something and um, take it with you and there'll be snacks and what have you is my understanding. So I thought that sounded like a lot of fun, but again, you do have to register and get a ticket for that. Um, so uh, also on the 5th, um, actually, that's not the fifth. On the sixth, um, there is a uh, boho market, which is in McKinney, right down the road from the restore, as a matter of fact, at the cotton mill. Um, and they're going to have live music, artisan food, and um, there'll be small businesses there. And this is, I guess, their first public event at the cotton mill. Oh, okay. So that, that sounds like fun. So this that's is a new place. I, I know I haven't ever been there. No, the Cotton Mill's been around for a while, but I believe they've been holding just private events like weddings and that type of thing. Well, I know the Cotton Mill's been there a while. It's a oh. historic place. Yes. <laughs> Maybe you could talk to us about that. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> but, but this particular venue, is yes. this new? Okay. Yes, this okay. Boho Market, yes. Okay. Um, so that is at 610 Elm Street. Okay. All right. And then February 7th. Oh, it tops. 
Oh, okay. Pops Brewery, February yep. 7th, which is Super Dole, Super Super Dough Super Sunday. Dough Sunday. Super Bowl Sunday. They're going to have a watch party. Okay. Starting at 5 30. And uh Tups is at 721 Anderson in McKinney, but also at Tups the second Saturday, I believe, of every month. Okay. They have an arts and crafts. It's an outdoor venue. So weather permitting, I it's would imagine. Semi outdoor. I mean, they have the covered space. Right. And then it's outdoor. Yeah. Yes. Um, and so at noon on the second Saturday of the month, which would be, I didn't know. It'd be the 13th. Okay. Right. Yes. 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 The 13th. Um, it will be different vendors. Obviously, Tufts is a brewery. So there will be alcohol. There will be alcohol involved. So that is always fun. Yeah. Shopping. And if you've never been to Tufts uh, and you live in Collin County, you should try it. It's our local um, uh, uh, local brewery there. Mm-hmm. And they uh, take a tour because uh, we took a tour there yes. recently. And the owner of Tufts or one of the owners, it was telling the story of how they started, you yeah, know, and in the garage. Right. And, yeah. In- very interesting um, story. Yeah. Um, they, they'll have live music i would imagine because mm. they did when we were there right um so i would imagine that's everything live, live music is always better than dead music yeah yeah i prefer it yes i i, I agree with you <laughs> on that one um let's see what else do we have okay so not in mckinney um <laughs> on february 13th and 14th at the frisco fresh market Okay. Which I've not been to, so maybe we'll need to take a field trip there. All right. Um, There is going to be, on the 13th, from 8 until 10, so not very long, a Porsche auto show. All right. I love cars. For those that like cars, Porsches in particular. Um, And then on that same weekend, on that 13th and the 14th, they are also going to have a Valentine's event that will just consist of selling crafts and treats and that type of thing so you can get your sweetie something yeah so like candy and 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 candles i think candles right and probably some i would imagine some types gifts everything that you like yes right well look hey we should go because he's got cars let's make a deal is we are down a car right now so we'll go buy a porsche you buy me a porsche okay and i will buy you a box of chocolates that doesn't sound like a very good deal. Oh, sure. It's a great deal. <laughs> Only if I can drive the port. Oh, there you go. <laughs> um, so Frisco Fresh Market. All right. Um, and that is at 9215 John W. Elliott Drive. Okay. All right. And that's all we got? That is all we have. All for right. Now. Oh, wait. No. Oh. No. For those of you that have children. Sorry. Sorry. Yes. Those of you who have children, February the 15th. Well. It's already started, and it will run through February the 15th at the Herd Museum. Okay. They have a dinosaur live exhibit. Right. So, so they have live. live dinosaurs. Yes, and they apparently move around. Okay. And um, they are closed on Monday, so don't try to go on Monday. Um, but every other day of the week, they're open from 9 to 5, mm-hmm. Tuesday through Saturday, Sunday, 1 to 5. Um, you can get your tickets online. Okay. And those tickets are just general admission tickets. Just and the dinosaurs are included in the Correct. general admission. How Correct. fun. Yes. I don't know yes. any kid that doesn't like dinosaurs I right know. now. I anyway. even I like dinosaurs, I guess. <laughs> um <laughs> Yeah, if, so that is something tells me if dinosaurs were alive today, we would have a pet dinosaur. We would, we absolutely <laughs> we would name him Littlefoot. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that's the kind of thing we want to give to you guys, uh, these little things to do because I know that on any given weekend, Angie and I are always asking, well, What do you want to do? What do you want to go and do? And so we kind of want to provide that information. But if you have events that you know about or you're participating in or you're heading up, Please let us know about them. We'll be glad to mention them here on the podcast because that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to build the community yes, and uh, get people together from all parts of uh, the area. So again, as we close out this episode, we thank you for joining us, for having patience with us. As you can see, we're not professionals, um, but hopefully one day we'll get better. Um, so, you know, keep giving us a shot. You can, you can um, subscribe to our podcast by going to callingcounty.life. And we have both a video version and we have the audio only version. 
And the video version, you can follow right there on the website if you like, or on iTunes if you search Collin County Life. So if you go to iTunes, search Collin County Life, click the subscribe button and the little bell, which is a notification, it'll, it'll notify you when a new episode is available. Um, and you can also follow the audio version of the podcast also on our website by clicking the audio button. We'll take you to the audio side. And you can also subscribe there uh, through Podbean, if, uh, the, the Podbean, uh, Podbean app, if that's your preferred uh, platform for listening to podcasts. But our podcast is available on all of the different podcast uh, services. So whether you use Apple, uh, Amazon, Audible, uh, Stitcher, uh, Google, all of those, it's available all, on all of those. So it's distributed across all of those platforms. So please subscribe because your subscription, you know, here's the thing, you don't pay anything for a subscription. It just tells us that people want more of what we're doing and it helps guide us in the direction we want to go. Um, and of yeah. course, if you ever, you know, get tired of listening to us, you just <laughs> unsubscribe, right? And that would be a bummer. But uh, it, I, what I'm trying to say is there's no commitment to subscribing, but it does send us a, a message to, uh, to tell us that we're on the right track. And so, if we're not on the right track, yeah, feedback, right? Feedback would be would be absolutely right. So if you fantastic. want to hear if you want to hear less of Brent and more of Angie or vice versa, <laughs> right. just let us know. And don't forget, uh, go ahead. Uh, you'll also be able to um, uh, listen to the uh, if you go to our website or the Facebook page, there'll be information about listening to the um, history, the history podcast, <laughs> which is just an episode just talking about the history of Collin County. And you, you can also listen to uh, the interviews that we do with people, they will also be just individual um, episodes, if you will. Right. So, so you can just watch them by themselves without watching the whole. So if you hear an interesting interview and you want to share that with somebody, you don't have to share the entire episode. You can just share that particular interview with them by going to our website. <laughs>